Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Computer Web Test Day. In today's episode, we're gonna take a closer look at SAS or basically serial attached SCSI drives, basically the server hard drives. So let's dive right into it. Now, first thing you have to understand, all we are talking about is what we classify as data interface, basically going data from one place to another. So you have to understand in the early days, the hard drive sizes used to be in MB, 200 MB hard drive supposed to be like the cool kit. So you have to understand, we have capacity that has multiplied exponentially. So at this point in time, you can literally go to a market and buy a hard drive that has upwards of 12 terabyte. And if you have access and pull at some places, you can get enterprise hard drives that are like even bigger than that. So at this point in time, our capacity has grown exponentially. And let's also discuss about the speed. Uh, it's no point having a very, very, very big capacity hard drive if you can't transfer fast enough. So you, you're not gonna use a, like a micro SD which has two terabyte to watch movie from that because it will take forever. So our speed has also multiplied. So we went from SATA 1, which was barely 150 Mbps, then SATA 2, which was barely uh, 300 Mbps, then SATA 3 that we are using right now that goes upwards of 600 Mbps. So you can see our speed is also getting doubled every time. Now our interface market has also adapted to it. Basically, if you are old enough, you will remember these sort of beta cable that was used to, for connecting hard drives. There are a lot of interesting hassles like uh, you to connect two, that's why there is always two. You have to have one master, one slave. Yeah, it was a whole complicated mess. So this also changed because this was not efficient enough and it was basically parallel. So in principle, parallel sounds good, but because of the chips that were behind it, they were not that good. So the speed that you will get on these were not good enough. Enough. But then again, that changed. We changed from PETA to SATA. This is your current interface. SATA can go upwards of 600 Mbps as of current latest revision. So this is the consumer side. What about the problems that we face because of this consumer oriented nature? The first thing is the speed is limited. You really can't go very fast. You can't even touch one gigabyte per second. So that's a very big issue if you are trying to serve a server. Then the cable run. Now cable run is not an issue for your basically cabinet which is a normal computer cabinet would barely need a cable that is like one foot or sometimes let's say two foot if you are doing cable routing. But in case of a server you can easily run in a scenario where you have processor at the top of the server and a lot of other things like a hard drive base into going down 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 down. So at the lower end you could have a scenario where you need upwards of few meters of cable to make sure you go that far. So cable run also becomes a crucial aspect. Without having uh, the ability to make very long cables, you can't uh, daisy chain a lot of hard drives. It becomes an issue. And SATA is built for public use. So it's basically built with one extra time. You want to write something, okay, tell me, I'm gonna write it. Now you want to read something, hold up. Until the write operation is done, it will wait. And once that is done, it will give you the right one. Now, because it's 600 Mbps, it's fast enough that we don't notice it. But for a consumer in, uh, environment, that's more than good enough. But when you're talking about, let's say, server where you have hundreds of banking client, uh, like, you know, directly trying to read and write information, basically transaction information, you cannot wait that long. So that is an issue. And in terms of how much uh, stress it can handle. This is the final breaking point. The stress management for these sort of hard drives, they are not very good. They cannot have like hundreds of information that is queued up and it will like, you know, take care of one after one another, which is necessary for anything that is mission critical. So if you have a server that is taking care of security or you are having a server that is taking care of something very crucial, mission sensitive, like air traffic controller, you cannot have a scenario where hard drive just, oops, I forgot that one calculate, uh, like, you know, one read write information that I supposed to do. It has to do everything every time reliably so this is the limitation of our normal interface that you are with pata and seta then we won't move up to serial attached SCSI. Now you have to understand this SCSI is same as PATA. It used to also come for parallel uh, as SCSI. Now it's moved to serial, same as PETA and SETA. Now the core difference between this and uh, your normal system is, is basically the backbone, the code, the protocols, the everything that is built on, it's very stable. It was from day one built for enterprise use. So it's not, uh, there is no corner cutting into this. So every aspect of it, every driver, every line of code that is, has been written 
written for this is written in such a way that it will never slow down it will and if something happens let's say crash happen it can reliably tell you what happened this is very crucial you cannot have a scenario where okay let's say you transitioned uh, let's say a money transaction happened the computer has to store data because there is no real money going from point a to point b when you are swiping your atm card or uh, doing a deposit using credit card it's just information that information let's say for some reason hard drive failed the scuzzy interface will notify it like dude it failed go to the backup system go to the backup backup system so this sort of thing happens in scuzzy the now this when you hear this scuzzy what does that mean small computer system interface now if that, that name sounds silly to you because it's in 1980s when they came up with this idea so back in that day that was the name so but now we are running with it basically we call sas hard drives and sas have same way sata has sata 1 sata 2 sata 3 scuzzy also has many iterations so latest iteration basically sas uh, 4 iteration can go up to 20 point, uh, 22.5 gbps or basically 2.8 gigabyte per second now this is why people need it this is what you if you go to a server room like let's say of uh, any big corporation this is what you will find you won't find sata hard drives you may find that in let's say netflix because netflix is basically doing streaming but you won't find that for youtube because youtube have a lot of interaction a lot of comments going back and forward so in those sort of scenarios these things are needed and you can see the backplane is also built in a such way that you can just plug in the hard drive remove it if it goes faulty everything about this is built in such a way that it can remain 24 into 7 up all the time no matter what happens so they only uh, inherently have multiple fail safe they inherently have multiple redundancy pathways so basically let's say you have back plane you put four hard drives into it let's say now this back plane is connecting to your processor if it will be connected in such a way that if one link fails it will go to another link it will not just randomly you know crap out so understand this is built from day one for enterprise grade every aspect of this is built for such a way so that is what SaaS is. Everybody talk about SaaS, SaaS, SaaS. This is what they are talking about. Basically, an upgraded version, enterprise based edition, and it has some certain advantages like reading and write at the same time. Now that information and the magnetic platter, it is more or less the same as your normal hard drive. However, because it's a reading and write at the same time, it could have like uh, one platter that is like reading the information, another platter that is writing the information. So this is the whole old architecture that we used to. SaaS is now becoming obsolete. So what we can expect in the future, if SaaS is like, you know, the whole enterprise grade thing is becoming obsolete, what can we expect in the future? Now you have to know NVMe is starting to replace it all. Now NVMe, the core aspect of NVMe is that it's directly based on PCIe Express lanes. Now PCIe, PCI used to be an old interface, then PCI Express came along, which is very fast. And the aspect of uh, it is that is very crucial for everyone is that it's directly talking to, uh, you know, your processor. Basically, it's the second fastest link to processor after RAM. So if you want to get the highest bandwidth possible, RAM is the, uh, you know, place to go. But after that, after RAM, the fa second fastest place would be PCI. So people are like, okay, let's use that itself for our, uh, you know, data transmission now it's coming for both nvme the architecture is built in a such a way that it can uh, you know handle both it can handle consumer and enterprise basically it can be cheap enough for consumer and it can be expensive enough for enterprise and the protocol would be the same nvme protocol would be the same of course you will have like let's say in case of uh, enterprise or in such a scenario you will have extra layers of security extra encoding decoding and uh, encryption chips but other than that the base protocol will remain the same however the connector this is a crucial aspect the connector would be different so for consumer use the whenever you type uh, nvme on a normal uh, basically ebay or amazon you get what we call m.2 this sort of thing what you are familiar to now this is built for consumer it's cheap it's efficient it's built for you know just plug and play kind of information now this is very good it does what it's supposed to do but it does come with a consequence this sort of architecture is not suitable for server because these puppies get hot and they get very very hot so you can understand nowadays there is a company that is giving you heat pipes to you know plug into your this drive and cool it down now in a server scenario this will be running at that temperature 24 into 7 that simply will not work and uh, the way it's meant uh, to be mounted you cannot hot swap these like even though let's say they wrote a software that allows it to be hot swap it simply would not allow you hot swap because you have to remove a screw here so there is a second standard this is the first standard this is what you will find in your laptop and your desktop but there is a server grade uh, basically uh, alternative to this which is called u2 u2 look like more or less normal hard drive and that is the idea so let's say you have a server rack you have to make sure that if one drive goes faulty you can quickly remove it out 
plug a new one in and it must have in such a way that it can be cooled basically the air cooling must be feasible this cannot be air cooled properly you can say like you have to buy a very very fancy tickle things but for this it's literally relies on the same fan relies on the same air airflow architecture that old hard drive used to be that is why u2 is built for server integration and m2 is built for uni so this is the future saas hard drive will they survive of course if they will keep trying to refresh it and at some point because this do come with one consequence this requires very very serious high end processor because you are doing the pcie express uh, processing you must have a processor that can handle that so it is very like because of its high speed it does need high speed processor so it will take some time to replace saas but uh, soon it will be done because of the core aspect because nvme is built from ground up it can go very 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 fast as of now you can buy a saas uh, basically nvme system that can give you upwards of 2.5 gigabyte read and write at home this is the aspect. and in enterprise grade you can easily find something that can go up at even higher than that so for this reason this is the future now will saas evaporate no it will slowly be in phase out same way we phased out pata hard drives uh, we gonna phase out saas hard drives now it could change forever some uh, saas because there is a corporation that is taking care of saas its interface its uh, command lines they may do something unique and you know make it live longer but as of now as i believe it is nvme is gonna replace it sooner or later So this was my presentation on SaaS hard drives. I hope you liked it. Learn from it. In that case, please leave a like. If you didn't like it, don't worry about it. You can press dislike. I would urge you to press it twice to show me your extra disappointment. And if you weren't disappointed, please click the ad that are shown in this video. That will directly help me. And leave a comment because I reply to all of them. Subscribe and press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.